Let me heart pray, O oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus. We certainly come before you, Lord, just to say thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for being our strength, for being our shield, our buckler, our very present help in the time of trouble. We ask you, Lord, to continue to bless our hearts and our minds and our spirit as we continue, Lord, to do your most perfect will. Have it set in our hearts, Lord, to please you, to walk before you, to magnify you. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul under the sound of our voice. Bless men and women and children everywhere. Continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Remember those souls that are, are lost under the sea? We ask you, Lord, that you bless them to be recovered in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that you'll bless our council coming up, Lord, that you'll send forth your power, your spirit. Let everyone be with one accord in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. All right. Uh, we certainly want to go back over to uh, the book of St. Matthew, chapter number five. And I certainly want to finish um, that chapter on tonight. Thank you, Jesus. And, and it helps to, uh, I call it church etiquette. Uh, or uh, kingdom etiquette, uh, meaning this, that these are the things that Jesus taught uh, to help us in his kingdom and, and to be productive uh, members of the body of Christ. When I say productive, uh, <clears throat> we should always be producing. We should always have fruit in our lives. Amen. Amen. If there's no fruit then, then something is wrong. Amen. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me bring it forth fruit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So as we look then at uh, uh, Matthew chapter number five, let's drop down to verse 17. Matthew chapter number five and verse 17. Telling them, you know, because now we 
those upper verses, he was talking to them about Beatitudes. And here now, he's focused, he's going to be focused on doctrinal teaching of, of the law of God. And he said, don't think that I've come to destroy the law. You know, because a lot of people think that the Old Testament doesn't mean anything. I want you, because well, we're in the dispensation of grace. But that's not true. You know, Jesus lived his life uh, through the prophets, uh, what was foretold. And we ought to live our lives uh, based on what was foretold Amen. according to the prophets. Amen? And uh, uh, so he said, don't think that I've come to destroy it, to take it away, but to fulfill. And that word there, fulfill, it really means to give enhancement. To show us what what the what what really the Lord meant as he as as he had brought forth the word. Uh, those Pharisees and Sadducees, they were they were doing things wrong because they were doing things based on their own desires, on what they wanted to accomplish. They added uh, uh, to to the scriptures, you know what I'm saying, uh, to to the laws and put yokes upon the people. Yeah, uh, that yeah. they themselves weren't able to bear. And that's not Jesus. That's not the way of the Lord. So he said, don't think that I've come to destroy it, but I've, I've come to show you a more excellent way. I've come to fulfill what God has said. Amen? My brother? Bishop, we still uh, are under the Ten Commandments, though. Absolutely. You know, that, that was back under the law. Absolutely. So we still abide by Ten Commandments. Absolutely. Absolutely. And those Ten Commandments, uh, when you're witnessing the people, that's what you should be quoting. Uh, to show, show them the error of their way and say, if you have broken one of these, then, you know, you need to repent. You're in sin. You should turn in your heart to God. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, verse 18. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, now that's encouraging because uh, he's saying that uh, until heaven and earth pass, and, and we know that there's going to be a new heaven, and we know that there's going to be a new earth. Amen? Amen? And then he says, not one jot or one tittle, meaning not one iota, of God's word is going to fall to the ground. Uh, everything that God has said is going to come to pass. Amen. Amen. That's encouraging. Amen. Am I right? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We can trust in God's word. Yeah. And, and notice, he said, until all be fulfilled. Everything that is written in the scriptures is going to be fulfilled. Amen. 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 Yeah. When I was, when I was uh, uh, preaching on Sunday, I was, uh, the Lord dropped in my mind about uh, uh, his predispensation, how he's preordained things, amen, and, he's, and God is operating off of his predispensation. Yes. He's operating amen. off of the things that he has already ordained, amen. amen, and he's not going to change. Everything that God has said, the only thing that God is going to do, is already settled, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. So therefore, we just got to get on more. Yeah. Uh, except yeah. what God has said. Uh, yeah. And live accordingly. And then, and then live in faith. Knowing that what God has said, it has to come to pass. Yeah. Amen? Amen? That's encouraging, isn't it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bishop, yes, sir. I just had a comment on you said. Hallelujah. Be, just accept when you say, oh, you know what yeah. God has said. Yeah. And someone that I was uh, teaching a uh, Bible study and someone <coughs> asked me, well, what if, what if I'm not happy <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> with what God <laughs> has for me? You know. So I was like, yeah. Well, you just you got to see, you got to talk to him about that. Right, <laughs> you, right. know? you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's a big thing. Like we have to, Absolutely. you know, we have to accept it. That's yes. a big word. That's it. You know, because if we're not accepting what God says he wants us to do or He has, what he has for us or he want to do in us, 
Right. Then it's gonna make it that much harder. Right, absolutely. My first thought was turn around three times and get glad. <laughs> but you know, in essence, that's what he means by humbling ourselves. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> and I can't, it, it's not always gonna feel good. No! It's not always gonna feel good. No! But that don't mean I can change one word of it. Nope. Huh? Nope. That don't mean I can change it just because yeah. it don't feel good. Right. Huh? Yeah. Not my will. Uh, but that will be done. Yeah, that's true. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and if God changed, that would make him not God. Mm. Amen. Amen. Mm. We ask him to change. Huh? Because he's a God that changes not. That's right. Huh? That's right. <laughs> he doesn't change. <laughs> yeah? He's consistent. Yes. Yes. And, and because he's consistent, it should help us. <laughs> huh? Because we can count on him. Yeah. We can depend on him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And, and that, what you said about uh, people that uh, when Jesus told them to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Uh, there were some disciples left. Uh, and he didn't beg them to stay. Uh, he looked at his 12 and said, will ye also go? Uh, and then Peter said, well, then where she we go? You alone have the words of life. Amen? That's the right answer. There's nowhere else to go. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. What verse do you Okay. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, mm -hmm. he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, with Jesus here, he's not uh, actually teaching, right, in this 19th verse about salvation. I used to think that he was talking about salvation at this 19th verse. But at this 19th verse, he's really teaching a principle. He's teaching a point. Because listen to it. He says, whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and teach men so, he shall be called what? The least. The least. least in the kingdom. And if you're breaking God's commandments, you ain't even going to be in the kingdom. Am I right? So he's not teaching about salvation. But, but he's teaching a principle here. Uh, who can tell me what the principle that he's teaching here uh, when you read that scripture? What do you think the principle is? Whosoever shall break one of the least of the commandments and teach men so shall be called least in the kingdom. But whosoever shall do and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. What principle is he teaching? Faithfulness? What? Obedience. Huh? Obedience. Obedience. All right. But listen, look, look at what it said. Look what he said. But whosoever shall teach them, uh, whosoever shall do and teach. That's the principle. Yes. Huh? Yes. Do and teach. Huh? Do and teach. Am I right? Walk by faith, not by sight. Am I right? Be not a, 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 a not only a hearer of the word, but be a what? Doer. A doer. A lot of people just uh, teach it, but they don't live it. The principle is do uh, and teach. Teach and do. My brother? Yeah, because, I mean, you're making matters worse if it says, uh, those of you who break uh, the least of my commandments. Right. So he's unhappy with you right there. Right. For breaking the commandments. Amen. And then it says, and then now you're going to teach others. Right. As if it's okay. Right. You, you, you know, so now you, you're making the, the word of God a lie. Yep. Yeah, that effect. The traditions right. of men makes the word of God a none effect. And so a principle here that he's saying, you know, uh, uh, keep his commandments, am I right? Do them and teach them. 
Amen? Uh, uh, we to go to Deuteronomy. We ain't got to go there. Deuteronomy chapter number 6. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is what? One Lord. Thou shalt love him with what? All your heart, all your mind, all your strength. Then it says, then, then it says, teach these unto your children. Uh, teach them to love God. Uh, teach them to love God with all their heart, mind, strength. Amen? So he's teaching a principle here. Amen. All right, read. Verse 20. Yeah. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, he's saying to them that except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. And, and the problem was that the scribes and the Pharisees did not believe on Jesus. Uh, they didn't believe that he was the Messiah. Uh, we have to believe that he's the Messiah, yeah. uh, that he's the Savior of the world. Amen? Amen? That, uh, once we believe that, then our righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees. Uh, <coughs> all right, read. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, yes. Thou shalt not kill, mm -hmm. and whosoever shall kill, shall be in danger of the judgment. Now, now, now he's uh, talking about anger, right? He's talking about anger now. Uh, because you won't kill nobody unless you're angry with them. <laughs> Amen? So he says, you have heard uh, that it was said of old time that thou shalt not what? Kill. kill. Amen? God still doesn't want you to kill. Amen. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of what? The judgment. The judgment. Meaning if you kill somebody uh, uh, without a cause, uh, then you're going to be killed yourself. Right? I'm angry with my brother and my sister, and I kill them, I shoot them dead, uh, then, then I'm going to be shot dead myself. Uh, God, God believes in capital punishment. He still believes in capital punishment. Uh, yeah. He still believes in it. Amen. <laughs> hey. All right. All right. Read it. 22. Uh-huh. But I say unto you. But Jesus says, I say unto you. Now, he, 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 he's after the, the, the root uh, of why people murder. Uh, why people uh, uh, lie and talk about one another. Uh, that's because they've got some anger in their own heart. Uh, James, he talks about that as well. Uh, Wherever come up wars and, 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 and rumors and, and wars among you, uh, doesn't it proceed from your heart? Yes, sir. Uh, and, uh, if, 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 if I steal something, if I steal something, where did it, is my, my hand is not the one that's offensive, it's my heart. Uh, that's, that's what's offensive. <coughs> All right? Because I stole because there was something in my heart, uh, my mind. Uh, so Jesus was after the thoughts, uh, which goes through the heart in the mind. Amen? Amen. All right, so we read, read that verse again. But I say unto you, verse Matthew 5, 22, read. But I say unto you, uh -huh. whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, shall be in danger of the judgment. Now, can I be angry with my brother? Yes, yes. I can be he angry with him. Because he said be <laughs> angry without a cause. Yeah, that be a cause. Yeah, that be a cause. Amen? <laughs> that be a cause. Now, if, if you do something wrong to me, I can get angry with you. Uh, but, but I can't allow that anger to turn into wrath. Uh, I can't harbor that anger. If I let that anger fester, it's going to turn into it's going to turn into bad. Anger is an emotion yeah. that you cannot, you cannot, you cannot get rid of. You go get angry, yeah. but you got to control your anger. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? That's why I said, be angry with your brother without a cause, uh, meaning that if, if there was no offense. 
just walking around. Now, now, now can, can I get deep on you? He, he's really talking about uh, you being one that's going to jump on board. Somebody tell you uh, about one of your brothers and sisters, and, and then now you mad. Now you ain't. Uh, now you upset. Uh, and you ain't got nothing to do with it. Uh, now you mistreating uh, your brother and sister. Uh, and they right. have done you no wrong. Uh, that's where the cause comes. That's what he says, without a cause. Uh, now, if they have done you wrong, right? Now you're angry with them. Now you've got to work towards repentance. Now I don't say repentance. you got to work towards forgiveness. Yeah. Uh, and get rid and manage that anger so it doesn't turn into wrath or malice uh, to where you want to hurt or kill your brother or sister. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, you somebody have the hand Go ahead. When we say uh, letting that anger fester in our heart, right? I'm dealing with a situation right now wherein one of my sisters went out to Walmart in Arbor Creek. And she said when she went to go in the store, she saw these three Caucasian guys standing out front and they looked somewhat suspicious. And the one looked at her, she said, I looked at him and I saw he had a gun beside him on his side. Mm -hmm. And he saw her looking at him and he pulled that rifle out and mm -hmm. shot her in the face wow. at Walmart. Mm. Huh? Right. So she had to go to the hospital. State police came. Off. They went through the whole, but she ain't did nothing to none of them. Right. But they got this anger built up inside. Yeah. For nothing. Yep. Huh? Mm -hmm. Just cause of the color of your skin. Right. You know. And mm -hmm. and just pulled her down and shot her. Yes. Yeah. 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 See that? See that? That anger festered and turned into malice. Hate, hate, wrath, murder. Amen. The Bible says, "Be angry and do what? Amen. Because it's an emotion. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't allow your anger to drive you to do evil. Go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, you speaking about in the church. Uh huh. Uh, Paul was angry with John Mark. Oh yeah. And they got into it. Yeah. You know, and, and Paul said, "Hey, I don't want." Mm -hmm. so, you're not you're not any good to me right now. Right. But he didn't he didn't harbor that in his heart. There it is. Mm -hmm. He didn't harbor that in his heart because uh, long down the road he said, "Hey, send John Mark. He's useful now. Profitable. You know, he's profitable to me. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But he didn't harbor the fact that I don't want to have anything to do with John Mark ever again. Right. You know, that's not of God. That's not of God. That's not God. So, so what he's teaching is, is, is exactly what he said. Anger is also used as motivation. If you're angry about something, it can motivate you to make a change. Huh? You follow me? So, so anger is an emotion that has to be controlled. We use the word temperance. Yes. Huh? I can't allow my anger to control me. Uh, and I'm a fool to think that, uh, uh, that I won't get angry. Right. Amen. You should get angry about something. Go <laughs> 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 uh -huh. <laughs> ahead. Uh, that was a beautiful case about that in, on a bat, one of the basketball players, uh, Jimmy Butler. Mm -hmm. His yeah. mother threw him out of the house wow. when he was 13 years old. Yeah. She told him, you don't look good to me. Get out. Wow. And that's all she said to him. Wow. 13-year-old boy. Now, where would he go? Right. Now he's a big basketball star. Yeah. And they ask him, do you, you know, have anything to do with your parents? He said, oh, yeah, I talked to my parents. Right. I talked to my mom and dad. He said, I love my mom. See that? He didn't take it personal. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. So... He, he turned it in, uh, around for himself. Yeah. And I believe that's why God blesses him so. Because right. he's honoring his mom and his dad. Absolutely. And, and see, now, now, now see, on another beautiful point. You know, quite, I'm sure when he was kicked out of that house, he was angry, upset. 
Huh? I, I know I would be. That's a natural response. Yes. Yes. Huh? But but somewhere he let it go. Yes. Yes. Huh? He didn't yes. allow it to destroy his life. Yes, sir. He used it as a stepping stone. Yes, sir. Uh, that's what Jesus is teaching. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Huh? Don't don't be running around with anger in your heart 20, 50 years. I'm uh, just a mad thing. But the, Lord, but the Lord blessed him, Bishop, to get yeah. into a house of his friends. Yeah. And his mother took her, took him in. Uh -huh. And no doubt she told him, Don't don't be angry with your mother. Right. You know, you know, you don't know why she did that. Yeah. Whatever. And she put she instilled some good things in him. Absolutely. You know, so he he, he learned to just don't just don't take it personal. Absolutely. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Read that verse again. 22. Uh -huh. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. All right, now, without a cause is simply meaning this that it has nothing to do with you. Uh, that which has happened uh, to your brother or sister, they haven't offended you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they haven't done anything to you. So that's without a cause. <coughs> All right? Now, if somebody, your brother or sister, have done something to you, you can be angry with them. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be upset with them. Uh, but you do not let that anger turn into malice or wrath. Be angry, but what? Sin not. not. Then you have to work towards forgiveness. Amen. Yeah. God is angry with the wicked all the time. Uh, but he forgives them, doesn't he? Yes. Uh, forget that. That's the key. God angry with the church. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Heart <laughs> read. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rekha. Now, you have that anger. Now you're turning that anger into name calling. Mm. Uh, no good so and so. Mm. Now you're judging their character. Mm. Uh, mm. No good so and so. Now you're judging their character. Good for nothing. Huh? Now you're judging their character. You follow me? Are we? But who, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Rekha, shall be in danger of the council. Uh -huh. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Now, Rekha is, is they call it calling somebody empty head. Huh? Call him empty head. <laughs> Uh, name call. Uh, and then the, the fool, he's saying, uh, Paul called people a fool, but he wasn't using it in, in this way. Uh, when he calls somebody a fool in this way that Jesus is using it, he's talking, he's saying that now you, you're stepping in the place of God and judging their character. Uh, you're, you're, you're looking at them, judging of uh, their character, their personality, and talking about them, of, of who they are. Basically, you say they have no redemptive uh, 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 portions in them. Mm. Huh? Huh, my brother? Uh, and, and you have to be careful. Absolutely. Because that can almost turn into blasphemy. Absolutely. Because you're speaking about somebody that has God in their life. Mm -hmm. Although they might have fallen or made a mistake. Yeah. But God said, go to him that is spiritual yeah. and be restored. Yeah. But that doesn't mean he's not still with God. Right. That God is not, not dealing with them. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Amen. All right, read. Now, if, I, if I'm doing that, he's saying I'm in danger of what? Hell fire. I ain't going to name him. He's talking about just the grave. He's talking about going to hell and burning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, me. 23. Uh -huh. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, mm -hmm. and there remembers that thy brother hath ought against thee, mm -hmm. leave there thy gift before the altar, uh -huh. and go thy way. Uh -huh. First be reconciled to thy <laughs> brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Now look, he's still talking about be angry with your brother. Uh, he's still talking about that. And not murdering them. Uh, now, instead of uh, uh, taking it 
and, and, and not dealing with it, he said, if you remember that thy brother has ought against thee, uh, you're, you're angry, your brother is angry with you, uh, he said, leave uh, your gift at the altar and go and do what the key word here is, what? Reconcile. Amen? Be reconciled. Be one. Amen? Now, that, that, uh, uh, to be reconciled and, uh, to thy brother, and then he said, then come and bring thy gift. Amen? So he's saying, if, if, there's, if there's anger between you and your brother. Now, now the world, they, uh, this, this scripture really doesn't apply to the world. Uh, because they're not living under the same kingdom principles as your brothers are, as the church is. Amen. Uh, Amen. So, so, you know, the chances of being reconciled to them uh, could be zero to none. Uh, but the chances of a brother and sister being reconciled as a family is it should be 100%. Uh, why? Because we understand that we're helpers one to another. Uh, and we understand what God's word has said. If, if I don't forgive my brother and sister, the Lord won't forgive me. Uh, if we understand those principles, don't we? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So he said, go and be reconciled. Get it together. Amen. Uh, let it go. Get it together. Straighten it out. Amen. All right. We. 25. Uh -huh. Agree with thine adversary quickly. Now, now he's talking about somebody that is getting ready to sue you. Uh, you have done them wrong. Right? Or you may have not done anything to them, but they still want to sue you. Uh, he's saying, instead of letting it go to the court, uh, see about straightening it out before it gets to court. Yes. Uh, see about working it out before it goes to that level. All right, read. Agree with thine adversary quickly. Uh -huh, now agree with your adversary quickly. While thou art in the way with him. Uh -huh, now, now, that in the way with him, meaning that before the court date, uh, before it goes before the judge. All right, read. Least, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Uh -huh. and, and you get the, you get the raw uh, end of the stick. Uh, you get the raw deal. Mean this. This is what Jesus is teaching. He says, the world system is not fair. It's not just. Uh, so you you going into the, the courtroom, you may get the, uh, uh, the end of the stick. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You may get that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, God is almighty. He can touch the man's and the woman's heart, the judge's heart. He can turn it around. Uh, he can do that, can he? Yeah. But he doesn't do that always. Uh, he doesn't do that all the time. People get raw deals. Amen. Am I right? Yeah. So he's saying reconcile. That's the principle he's teaching. Uh, reconcile. Uh, there, was a, there was a man that, that the Bible, Jesus is talking about a parable, and the, the, the guy was unjust, and, and he was in charge. He was a steward. Over his, over his master's money. Huh? And then the, he found out that the master was going to come and kick him to the curb. Huh? So he decided, oh, well, since he, they're going to do that, my master's going to do that, I'm going to go to everybody that my master owes, and I'm going to lower their bill. At huh? least when my master gets rid of me, huh? some of these people will have mercy on me and be hired. Huh? And Jesus, he didn't rebuke the guy for that. Uh, he said that guy would act in a wise way because he was making preparation for himself. Uh, he was doing he was doing things in a wise way so that so that you know he was selling things so that so that so that if, if the trouble came, 
Huh? He, he had some help. Yes. Yes. Huh? That's what the Lord wants us to do. We, we should be wise. Huh? We should know and see when storms are coming. Huh? And instead of opening the windows wide, huh? do preparation. Close the windows. Yes. Circle the camp. Huh? Do stuff that is necessary for self-preservation. Yes. Huh? Uh, be wise. Be wise as a servant and harmless as a what? Yeah. A dove. That simply means be wise. Be swift to think. Be quick to think. Huh? And then and in your swiftness and quickness, huh? Don't harm nobody. Huh? Don't harm nobody. Amen. Don't don't be don't be uh, uh, conniving. Don't be devilish. Yeah. Don't be self-centered. Huh? <laughs> My God! <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost! Alright, Deacon Bill! When you're going to uh, try to make peace with someone and reconcile, yes. uh, that other person may not be one at that, that point to make peace. True! And when you confront this person, man, when you bring them, be that free with them. True. Yeah, you're right. Yeah! Because if you, if, you, if, you, if you don't, you want to, it might have to call the police. That's it. That's it. He hit the nail right on the head. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. He hit it. He, he hit it right on the head. Yeah. Because not everybody going to agree. Everybody going to agree. Yeah. Huh? I say see it in a different way. But he said agree with him. Okay. Okay. All right. But for peace sake. Yeah. Huh? You can be like Burger King. Have it your way. <laughs> uh, for peace sake. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now, what is that? Yeah. But then, you know, if you do go to him and say, oh, yeah, I didn't see it like that, and you right, blah, 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 then, you know, that's good too. But if the other happened, you know, say, oh, okay, you got it. Uh, does that make you less of a person? No. No, that makes you right in the sight of God. Yes. Amen. And now you can move on. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Oh, this is a good Bible study. <laughs> good. There's a lot of people who get pulled over by the police. And yeah. they ask them a few questions. And they automatically go off and say, why do you need to know that? Yeah. I don't know nothing. <laughs> Instead of going along with what he's asking. Right. And, and, and take care of the matter. They go all to the left. To the left. To the left. And he's saying, step out the car. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Now you land in the angry black man. I'm not going to be playing man. with you no more. Step right. out the car. Right. Right. Now you might get the beat down. Woo. Right. 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 That's true. And got five more cars coming. That's it. That's yeah. You know, we got to we gotta control our emotions. Am I right? Yeah. I was, I was, I was at... Uh, a store Saturday, right? Uh, uh, trying to purchase some things, and and I'm working with the sales guy. And the sales guy giving me some deals, giving me some prices, cutting them down. I'm like, man, look at God, I'm doing great. Uh, then I, I walk out of the store to get something from the store, uh, out of my car to bring back to the guy. You know what I mean? And then when I came back in. And, and, and when the police 
It's different. Yeah. Uh, we know that, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so answer the question. Yeah. You know? Just answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Live to find another man. <laughs> My brother. I would say it's kind of a, a light, dark thing. I'm, 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 I'm getting off the subject a little bit. But, you know, as far as, you know, people allowing the enemy to work through them. Right. They, they know, they see the light. Mm-hmm. They, they, you know, he seen, he, he knew who, right. you, who you were. Right. It wasn't, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he was just, he was allowing the enemy, the enemy to, to work through. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be a light, you know, because things have, we all been through that as Christians. Absolutely. You're like, dang, where this come from? You know, people just being rude for no reason. Yeah. They're just walking up on you. Amen. <laughs> All right, who do we have? What verse we have? Uh, 26. All right, 26. Thank you. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost part. No, 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 no. You know what I said? I said earlier, I said, you know, God is an avenger. Am I right? Amen. Uh, but sometimes, uh, 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 He'll allow when things happen, we get the short end of the stick. Am I right? Amen. Now, the thought just came to my mind is, you know, the Lord warned us about that. Uh, in the scriptures. So he's still just. He's still fair. Uh, he said, uh, if someone has a problem with you and are taking you to the court, try to settle it before it gets there. Amen. Because what could happen, he's saying it here. Yeah, uh, uh, thou shalt not no means come out till thou have paid the uttermost part of yeah. uh, There's a possibility <laughs> it won't go in your favor. Deep. We go through so much when we don't do things the way God 
knows what they are because we did it when we were in the world. Absolutely. So and you can't fool them. Can't fool them. Not only does he know, I know. Yeah, you I know. know. I know what's in there. You know. So well, until I can be truthful with myself, yeah. right? I'm going to continue having that battle. Yeah. Wow, yeah. ah, that's deep. That's true. So, so if there's an effect, right? If, if there's something you can't handle, uh, get rid of it. That's not a sign of weakness, that's a sign of strength. Yes. Am I right? What's that? Men and women. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because women and men are different. Men are turned on by what they see. Yeah. Women are turned on by their emotions. I do know. It's easier for a woman to get the victory over lust. Because she's not turned on by what she sees, you know, every man she sees, you know, she just she desires him, you know. It's only one flesh, Bishop. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's easier. I wouldn't say that. Well, I say it's easier for me. Uh, it's only one flesh. Yeah. Uh, but the point is, is this, is that whatever the male or female, whatever the stumbling block is, yes. get rid of it. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Amen? Yeah. Get rid of it. It's better to get rid of it uh, than try to, than try to uh, 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 live in a fantasy like it ain't bothering me. Right. Uh, like I can handle it. No. Be honest, can I be honest? Yes. If you're telling yourself you can handle it, then you can't handle it. You're trying to convince yourself. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. That's like the alcohol. Oh, uh, I can take a drink or two. My brother? Uh, years ago when I first got saved, my pastor, my, my former pastor used to say, uh, sometimes we try to put a cape on and be super Christian. Uh, dealing with things we know we have a weakness for. You know, uh, mm -hmm. or, or, yeah. what's the word? Uh, trying to desensitize us. Yeah, or, or, or saying to trying to, yeah, you know, convince. trying to convince ourselves. Right. You know, we put a cake, oh, I'm, I'm super, I can deal with this, I can handle this. Right. No one inside you can. Can't, right. Yeah. Yeah. Be honest, be true to thy own self. Right. Yeah, Lord. Thank you. All right, what verse we? Verse 29. Uh-huh. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Pluck it out. Now, if it's offensive, yes. get rid of it. If it's offensive, <laughs> get rid of it. Right? Fuck it out. Yeah. He's talking about weaknesses. Yeah. Right? You don't have the victory over it, get rid of it. Oh, man. Right? All right, read it. And cast it from thee. Uh -huh. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Now what he's saying is, it, it's better for you to live without that thing that is causing you trouble than to try to live with it and go to hell. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. Right? Yes. Don't let that be your Achilles heel. Don't let that be your kryptonite. Yes. Right? Mm. One, of the, one of the, I'm going to say it like this. One of the greatest and saddest stories in the Bible is Samson. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. God anointed him from, from being a baby. Uh, set him aside. Right? Gave him all kinds of strength and power. He did great works for God. But what was his Achilles heel? Delilah. Not only Delilah, but, but just women. Huh? I don't imagine that problem. Right. <laughs> Yes. Right? Thank you, Lord. And, and she got it. 
She got it. She got it. Couldn't leave him alone. Couldn't leave him alone. Then, you know, uh, she found out what the secret was, so to speak. Told the men. And then, you know, he was playing with the fire too much. Because, I'm just going to say, Bishop, you can't really blame it all on her. Because he saw what she was doing. Yeah. And it, it happened more than one time. Right. Right. And here they come. Every right. time you tell her something, here they come. Right. So it was his fault, too? Yeah. Oh, well, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not blaming nothing on Delilah. I'm blaming it all on him. Yeah. That was all him. Huh? Delilah was just put the pawn. But that was him. That's his fault. Huh? All on him. 100%. Yeah. Wow. But Bishop, if you read the scriptures throughout, that has been man's downfall. Yeah. From the start. From the start. Yeah. That's what the devil is. From the start. From the garden. Yeah. That's what the devil is. Now, now, my point about my point about uh, his foolishness to the level that it went to mm -hmm. is that, you know, she came at least three times. Three times. Yeah, three times. Uh, and, and he didn't pay attention. That was it. Huh? <laughs> we got to pay attention. Huh? If it won't like a duck, talk like a
The scriptures say, don't think more highly of yourself than you are. Than you are. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen. I didn't think I'm somewhere where I'm not. Huh? Am I right? right? Hallelujah. I'm going to be honest. When I leave out of here, I feel like I'm 10 foot tall. Huh? I'm going to be annoying. But I realize I'm a man. Huh? I need God's help. Amen. He's a wonder. Yes, he's a wonder in our soul. 